Hello guys, good afternoon. 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 Good Your presentation ko, it's actually very short. And uh, I figured kasi, uh, coding girls mo nila by uh, Meg invited me to talk. And then I asked ko, ano yung, ano yung background ng attendees? Then she said, uh, lahat kayo technical terms. So yun yung background. And then, uh, seeing the program, I think previously like, uh, someone discussed about uh, here maps and digital ocean. So I figured, uh, I'll talk na lang about uh, hindi siya technical. No, kasi pa, baka kasi siya grabe naka-technical yung inisip niyo. So I, I share na lang my parang uh, the, our story, uh, the reason why we created uh, the company. And then feeling ko kasi as I think, kasi I started talaga as developer, parang we have this power to change uh, something, uh, parang ganun, no? solve a problem, no? create solutions. So I decided that what if, I'll share na lang to you guys my story, and then baka eventually, uh, magagaling kayo eh, like, uh, if may gusto kayong parang i-learn, makikita naman natin sa internet, pero mga meetups, and you can learn. Uh, so I figured na parang, parang inspirational talk na lang siya. So, yung background ko, uh, I actually grew, grew up sa Cebu. Uh, tas malayo pa siya. It's a province na yung parang bukit. Ba? So, yun yung, <laughs> yun yung, ano, yun yung uh, simula ko. And then, sa place namin actually, wala pang computers doon yung uh, growing up. No, like, uh, I used to walk mga two hours at most going, going to school and going back. Kasi yung layo ng bahay namin. And then, I learned parang programming sa high school ko, actually. Kasi province siya, uh, the government decided to like, donate a compu uh, parang computer laboratory sa school namin. The problem is, lahat ng teachers namin don't know how to use computers. So yung computer laboratory namin, it's actually locked. Tapos, parang na-interested ako. So what I, uh, what I do at night, kasi gabi yan eh, tapos probinsya ng tao, di ba? So parang I sneak I sneak out sa computer lab and like open the computers and like learn my first uh, coding na uh, I used to do flash before. Kasi may flash ano siya, no yung flash ba. Dali kasi yun i-learn it. It's graphic and there's action script. So based on the tutorial, so dun dun siya nagsimula yung interest ko sa sa computers. And then I think mga after 6 months na I'm sneaking around every night but learning. Uh, the school decided to open the laboratory. Pag open nila, syempre, hindi nila lang paano gamitin yung computers nila. So, ang daming nasira. And then, what they did, uh, kasi may naman nasira, I, I actually, what I did is I parang approached them and told them to, ano, baka I can fix the computers ba. And the moment na na-fix ko yung computers, so they actually gave me the key na. So, hindi na ako magsisnip every night. Kasi I have the keys na sa laboratory. So, that's, that's how I started uh, sa, no, sa uh, programming. And then, pag-graduate pag ko ng college, uh, luckily, uh, uh, I was one of the parang... Uh, nakakuha ko na scholarship sa DOST. So, nakaproceed ako talaga ng college. So, I get... Uh, parang yung kinuha ko is IT na degree. So I started talaga as a programmer, and then the moment when I graduate ako, uh, yung major ko is, uh, yung major na path ko is actually web development. So yung start ko na technology is PHP. I don't know if you can use PHP, but it's not. So I started as uh, parang, parang web develop, developer, PHP, and then parang, Kasi yung personality ko is, as much as possible, I want to like learn as fast as I can. So I transitioned into, parang different naman siya, systems engineering. 
So iba kasi yung programming sa system engineering kasi yung basically managing servers noon. So yung company kasi namin, just to give you a background, it's a telephony company, so we used to provide call center systems. So I used to do the web development uh, side of things and then I decided to manage uh, servers and then networks, like configuring Cisco routers. Then after, dumating yung mobile. So uh, decided to learn also mobile. And then while working, uh, kasi sa, sa work ko kasi, I always travel a lot back. So actually, nasa profile to ng Mica Bay if you check our uh, Facebook. A majority of our clients kasi are either in Manila or in Southeast Asia, na like in nasa China, so in Malaysia. And every time I travel, parang kailangan ko pa sumakay ng jeepney kasi I, I travel at door para makatipid yung kamasahin. Muna yan. Every time I travel, I need to sakay pa jeepney with my luggage. To, to go to a place kung saan yung merong mga taxi. So yun yung experience ko. So, uh, while working, parang since yung background ko naman is actual telephony, I decided to create an application na parang SMS siya actually. So my first uh, system for taxis is actually SMS based. Like the moment na you text to this hotline, parang kukunin siya ng SMS gateway, i-check siya, and then ibibigay siya sa mga naka-enroll ng mga taxi, taxi drivers via text din. No, and if the drivers decides to like get you, they will reply yes. Then yun, connected na kayo. So yun yung initial na, na, ano, na solution na I created. And then, 2012, bag, parang that's the start of the mobile na mga, mga smartphones ba. And then, mga mabas na si Google Maps, yung napakadali pala gamitin yung mapping. No? So, parang 2012, I formalized talaga or I founded talaga na the MyCab na application, as application, not as, a, as an SMS na si Sudem. So, so yun, 2012, wala pa ata si yung mga existing na players dito at that time. But we started uh, small now, around the beginning sa Cebu. Uh, we're partnering there sa isang taxi operators lang talaga, not everything. Like, we have 600 feet out of 6,000. So, and then, siyempre, hindi naman tayo ganun kayaman. So, uh, our strategy talaga is bootstrap. No? But, bago kami dumating na, actually, uh, I would like to share to you uh, kung ano yung trigger niya. No, like, from parang working as a developer, and then, you cannot deny it, developers in terms of earnings ba. Hindi uh, naman siya gaming ka cheap in terms of earnings. Yeah, malaki din siya. Malaki din siya. So, why I decided to parang, parang stop work and like do my kaba. So this is actually the trigger. No? Parang na-force na ko nito. This is actually my first na uh, public speaking uh, engagement. And then, yung personal thing ko kasi I'm an introvert. That's why I really love uh, talking to you now because wala ang microphone. May microphone ako nito. Hindi talaga. Eh, parang meron akong anxiety kung nakawak ko ng microphone ba. So, kung walang microphone, okay lang. Para nag usapan ng tayo. O, intimate na setup. So, this is my first na uh, parang public speaking na engagement. And it's actually very, I don't know if you can relate, parang ganyan-ganyan ba? <laughs> and the thing pa, <laughs> this actually in Stanford. Sa so, San Francisco. So, yun pa yung grabe ka, ano ka, ka so like, I asked my boss, because we were there to present my move to you know, foreign investors. It's a program by DTI because we're sponsored by DTI to visit San Francisco uh, to discuss uh, or to, to parang convince investors to invest in the Philippines. So yun yung parang pinaka-bulk na ano namin, o pinaka-purpose na pupunta namin doon. So I asked my boss, uh, boss, pwede ba ako like, mag-drink ng wine before speaking? So like, I, I'm not used to like speaking, and then, lalo na hindi pa to sa Philippines, US to eh, all English ba? English to sa Philippines. So, magpunta doon eh, may boss at grade, but the problem is, it's actually a school pala. There's no alcohol available, no? It's a school, magpunta rin sa kantin, wala pala alcohol dito. <laughs> so, so, parang grabe yan katriling na, oh shit, wala pala alcohol, and then I need to, I need to like, 
parang keep up they would be the better of me parang ganun ba so yun yung lumabas ng trigger kasi i think na the moment na hindi kasi parang anxious ka sa self mo kasi parang baka magkabali ka it's all actually focus sa self mo ba but the moment that you change that mindset so yung mindset ko niya bigla kong change na if if successful ako sa talk ko this actually for the better sa Philippines kasi all of this are American investors sa so Silicon Valley if ma feel nila na it's actually attractive to invest sa Philippines and I manage to convince them then it can help na our country so doon bigla kong nagka-confit parang may confidence na ba uh, discuss uh, start uh, parang ganoon yeah so from a very shy na very, very private very introvert na tao I'm still an introvert now. But bigla akong nagkaroon ng parang power sa self ko to actually parang speak. That's actually because parang yung mindset ko is not actually for me. I'm, I'm not doing this for myself but actually for some reason na bigger sa self ko. So yun yung trigger. So since yun yung trigger, the moment na I get back sa Philippines, a week after I started my cup. So that's when I started my campus. I have this concept, I have this problem na I really want to solve at 2012. Eh. Then, ginawa ko na talaga siya. No. So, parang sa start kasi nun, so syempre, you need support, no? you need training. Ako, hindi naman ako eh, parang entrepreneur na background. My, my mom is a single parent and then sa probinsya pa kami. It's not tech and we don't have lots of money. In fact, nakakalish na ako because of my scholarship. So we attended Idea Space. We're actually the first batch Idea Space. I don't know if narinig nyo na yung Idea Space. Yeah, yeah startup incubators. Kami yung batch one. No? So with this, uh, it's very good na Idea Space, like this is in Atokolo Rizal. Meron silang rest house doon. They actually housed us for a week. They created a parang mini MBA classes from 6 a.m. to 12 midnight for the whole five days. And then graduation is Saturday. So Saturday, this is the pitch. And the MPP, Malipanglina, is somewhere here as one of the judges. And so, doon actually nag start yung parang learnings ko being an entrepreneur. Because basically, my background is tech. No? Wala kong, hindi pa ako nakatry ng magtuturo ng business sa sarili ko. So that's my first, ano, my first parang uh, way to learn ba because of the training. And then, sadly, hindi kami nanalo kasi may, may they will select uh, top 10. Kami nasa top 20 lang kami. So we were there. But hindi, hindi kami napili as one of the top 10. No? But still, we decided to pursue it. The moment that we were back from Manila, uh, I managed to convince my first seed, seed founder. Si kailangan ko ng pera eh. So this is actually my first. Hindi ko na loko ba to? Is this the first naniwala sa sarili mo ba? Like, really help you. This is Kenneth, this is my co-founder. Uh, I met him in one of the startup events which I pitch. And then lumapit siya sa akin, sabi niya lang, this is really good, let's do it. No? But the thing is, both of our backgrounds are developers. So wala kaming marketing, wala kaming sales na background, wala kaming business development na background. No, but these guys are our business months. These are our first investors in So we created a prototype and then deployed it to so one of the taxis in Cebu. That's 2013. So there's around 600 cabs. Then siyempre, scaling issues, yung mga doon na ano. Uh, the moment that we started the, ano, the, the prototype. Ayun yung logo, ayun yung logo. Yeah. Pangit ba? Ah, ayun yung pangit ng logo. Yes, I'm going to the prototype. But basically, yeah, we started in 2013 and then the background element is actually PHP, but we decided to 
try, I don't know if you've heard na no OGS. So, yeah. kung yung isa sa, kasi yung time na yun, 2013, wala pang mga tao magamit na rin. So, we're coding our engine using that technology. Very new. And then, in terms of tutorials, it's very, you know, it's very new. So, walang mga tao na you can ask around. Ba. So, it's pretty challenging actually. And then, uh, fast forward to last year, to yung time na nag-bash kami. Eh. Uh, we started uh, negotiating uh, with the taxi operator sharing to Manila last year uh, to bring my cab from Cebu to Manila. So uh, this is our partner, Tony Bongson Tai and the uh, other operator. Then, ito kasi yung kasagsaga na merong pinati si Uber, si Grab, and then kami yung CBC kasi bigla kaming lumabas and then penalized, nagpenalize si LTFRB ni Grab, ni Uber. Tapos sabi nila, like we're all like politicians, grabe, panyaman natin pala, no? <laughs> we started very small and then we're here in Manila, we we're trying to help the taxi uh, companies and then they call us like uh, parang politician owned na ah, na ano na, 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 like all of our stories are in the internet actually no? they don't bother to like google it but like, really check what my is kasi yung lumabas sa press last year is para word well, it is not yeah no yeah no fake news so fake news ang lumabas para ganun tapos to publish pa to ay like totally fake and the far be up they call it the far be up so, like, totally bullshit ba? Uh, every time someone, uh, some people ask me, or reporters ask me ba, na, like, are you owned by the government? Are you heavily funded by politicians? I told them that, if that's true, then na monopolize na namin ito, matagal na. Imagine the influence, imagine the money, right? So, like, and then why, why, bakit until now, hindi pa kami nakalunch sa Manila? <laughs> so, if that's true ba, the thing that you're saying, wala na, parang wala na, finish na. Iboto! 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 The reason why you're actually coming here into Manila. Because as at first, I created my 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 cup for selfish na reasons. So I cannot get cup. No, but for my trigger, na I'm creating my cup. It's not for me to get the cup. It's actually to help the taxi drivers. Because yung nangyari pala is dito. Lagi tayong reklamo sa Facebook eh. Additional 50. Yung issue niya. Number one issue niya. Additional. Yung last na fair increase ng taxis is actually 2010. Until now, hindi pa siya naimplement. If in total mo yung inflation rate, it's actually para technical na no, 38%. So imagine mo yung 100 pesos 2008, uh, 2010, yung cost niya ngayon is 138 na. So imagine mo kung magkano yung sweldo niyo 2010, tapos magkano yung sweldo niyo ngayon? Yung pare din, no? Oo, hindi. Yung pare din. Oo, yung pare din. Example, Yan yung entry level, but based on experience, kasi ito may experience ka na eh. So, magkano yung sweldo mo yun, tsaka ngayon? Ah, hindi pa. Ah, hindi 
And then, ang grabe tayo magreklamo kung mag sila at additional 50 pesos. Mm-hmm. Which is, if you compute it sa inflation rate, 38%, kung average rate mo is 150, that's actually around 60 pesos, 70 pesos. Oh, na needed na parang kung gusto mo na fair, bayaran sila ng fair, mm-hmm. then you need to add that amount. Bakit? Kahit walang increase, kasi grabe na sila experience, but walang increase lang sa pamasahay natin. Yung bigas kasi, nagmahal siya 38% now, compared to last 2010. So yan yung pinaka-main problem. Bakit? Uh, bakit sila... Like some of the taxi drivers are actually very good. But syempre, nakainis lang na like you're working very hard. They're working 16 hours a day. And then at the end of the day, Kasi I'm always getting cab na like, interviewing them. Walang, like, yung may way nila, it's just 100 pesos, 200 pesos. Wala nang pangkain. Yeah, yun yung take home nila. So it's really very ano, frustrating ba? And then plus pa na the mileage that they're receiving. Why does that matter? Ganun pa yung situation nila. And then we're actually... Para project tender as mga criminal. Hindi pa sila kumikita. Baka alam mo yung cartel yan. Ano yan? Reverse 2 inch. Reverse 2 inch short yan. Gamit ni ano? Bato size. Yo, bato size. Kasi bato size. Taxi drivers, they're bringing katana sa taxi. Because it makes sense. So that's actually the reason why we really decided to pursue MICA. There's an existing number of applications, but it actually doesn't help the taxi drivers. It actually, parang nangyari pa, kumunti pa yung pasayro nila. It is unfair. So what we're doing, we know that the taxi drivers are not that tech. Tech. So we created the app talaga kahit meron ng mga competition for them. That's why my cab, wala kaming private cars. We're actually very focused on the private, uh, public transportation. Kasi we're enabling the public transport na ma-enable natin siya through technology para they can compete also. So you can cite the, the income, even the discipline. With the system kasi in place that we're creating, you can rate the taxi drivers. The taxi drivers also can rate you. Then they know na na someone is actually monitoring them. They need to be disciplined. Kasi kung hindi sila magpo-perform no better, di ba, mag-out sila sa system. So that's what we're bringing in sa people. We're trying to discipline the taxi drivers. And hopefully, we're also lobbying sa mga sa pamasahe nila. Kasi hindi nila yung peace also. Di ba? Kasi ilang, ano na, ilang, ang laki na ng inflation rate. Just to be fair lang. Kasi if you compare din naman sa competition, it's actually the, the fair structure is, ang layo na ako Different yung fair structure ng kapila. Si taxi, it's just the same. So, kawawa naman talaga sila. So, that's the very reason why we created my car. So, it's not actually para like, to earn money. So that's the secondary reason. But the very reason that we created my car is to help the taxi drivers. So, paano nyo masabi na like, totoo talaga siya? So you know, if you've heard about my cab and what we do, we're actually a taxi hailing platform. You can download it now, you can use it now, but grabe lang yung demands namin ngayon, so it's very hard to get a cab. No? We're processing 35,000 transactions in Manila alone, and then there's just around 2,500 taxis. But we're trying to scale as fast as we can, para naman maserve natin. 
the reason why we can say really na parang para po lang ito sa kanila, we're not charging any booking fees. Kapag sa time mo sa my cup, yung kung ano yung nasa metro, yun nga yung bayaran mo. Sa taxi drivers, they don't need to pay. Kasi sa kapila, they, they need to buy the device, they need to buy the internet <coughs> connection na, na plan. But for us, it's free for the taxi drivers. It's actually the taxi operator for shouldering the cost of the device and the data. So, sabi mo, grabe naman yung CIB, oh. Nag-free, parang charity na. Parang yung data. sa taxi drivers. That's the reason why we're deploying tablets sa, sa kaya natin. So, there's tablets kasi it shows advertising. So, the main business of my company is actually advertising. So, yun yung naisip namin. Paano ba natin mapabigyan ng additional income ng yung driver without letting them spend anything? And then giving the service to people without collecting additional fees. So, yun yung naisip namin. We decided to use advertising. You know? So that's very short, actually. If you're interested, this is actually my plug. You can join us. We're, we're, we need developers. If you can read that, uh, um, yeah. yun telephone number. <laughs> 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 you can actually send uh, uh, your applications no, okay. to info like that. See, or plug that oh, yeah, But na. yeah, if you have some questions. Um, uh, question. I, yeah. um, what kind of developers? Yeah, we're currently, uh, no, we're currently looking for uh, JavaScript, uh, GS, the mobile developers, and uh, mobile developers, Android and iOS. Yeah. System app. <laughs> I have a question. Yeah. Have a question. So, how do you take no investor in your phone uh, instead of uh, charging a uh, hard app in some taxi? And then, Sign is about advertisement. So you're, look, you're constantly look, looking for uh, advertisers because that's the main source of income. Yun. So in operating my cup, there's cost. There's the professional cost. The good thing with my cup is that we're collecting payments to taxi operators. That covers the cost. The operation and cost. So basically, uh -huh. wala kami cost sa operations. Whatever we earn sa advertising, that's actually a bonus. And we're sharing that to the taxi drivers part. Ako, ano, may co-sharing. So, uh, parang yung product namin, actually, if you're familiar, we're actually a subscription as a service company. Uh, taxi operators are subscribing per month, per unit. We to give them the system. So, yun yung business namin. Um, sa, um, Eventually, because a taxi, a taxi, taxi company, eventually, mag mangyayar, mangyayar yan. So, isa sa mga dahilan kasi is the service. Not, hindi, kaya hindi sa tumataas, kasi una, hawak din sila ng mga taxi operator. So, the driver, so instead of, instead of, ano, mapapay siya ng, it's actually a broken system. It's just a matter of fixing the regulation. The reason why I believe that we believe, Micah believes yeah. that the taxi, hindi ba siya na we're confident na hindi siya mawala, but it's necessary. It's because our roads are limited. The concept of taxi kasi, kahit you, you call that Uber, you call that Grab, you can actually parang package that as a taxi. The moment that the government steps in and regulate the number, number of vehicles, and the number, the, the, the amount of the fare structure. So that's actually the taxi concept. And what they're actually doing, kahit ano pa yung pangalan nila, it's actually the taxi. Kasi sila na yung may control, the government. The reason why the, go the government needs to control it, hindi naman exponential yung roads natin. The moment that you allow individuals to buy cars to ferry passengers, wala na yan, daming sasakyan yan, which, which happens last Ano yung traffic dito? Like, how many new cars were, were parang binili to serve Uber before? 
it affects the traffic kasi hindi naman nag-expand automatic yung daan natin. No? So that's the very reason why regulation is not actually the taxi na, 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 na issue, but why we need regulation because it's limited. No, the problem is with regulations too. Yeah, so that's why it's not, it's broken, but hindi natin siya mas crap kasi it's a necessity. So the, the only way to solve it is to fix the regulation. So it's either to create studies, ano ba yung kaya ng roads natin? Ito yung kaya ng roads, and we'll add taxis. Same concept. Ano ba yung dapat ng kitain ng driver? This is the, 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 ano, the requirement for them to live, to, to, to buy food, to send their sons and daughters to school. Then this is the fair structure. So yan yung dapat gawin. Like, we cannot really, kasi yun yung sabi ng iba, like, it's easy to take them out and replace with the, the free market concept. But it's not. Because free market meaning unlimited number of vehicles, hindi naman unlimited yung infrastructure natin. Maliban na lang kung may bento yung nasa taas. Elevated. Hindi na yan. Kasi unlimited naman yung ano natin. Flying cars. So yan, pwede na yan. Pero now, na wala pa yan, it's really hard natanggalin yung regulation. So you still have... Very deep na mga tapo natin. Oo, ang alit na mga topic natin. Sige, bukod. So this is a technical question. Uh, actually, last night, the timing din kasi sumakay ako, pero nag-grab ako. <laughs> Nakita ko sa pad yan, my cup. <laughs> Alito tuloy ako, sabi ko. Uh, sir, kamusta yung my cup? Kasi hindi uh, pa ako nakagamit ng my cup. Yeah. Tinanong ko yung taxi driver, yung difference between grab and yeah. my cup. So, huwag kang magagalit ha, kasi <laughs> three negative points from him, sabi niya, uh, is it true na kahit na sobrang layan ng distance, pinukuha pa rin ng driver? Oh. Pero ang problema is yung calculation, medyo talo daw yung driver. Oh. Okay daw sa customers, pero talo yung driver. Uh, number two is, medyo mabagal daw yung response. I know probably it contributed to the so yeah, that's actually uh, the the connectivity issue. Uh, that's a challenge. Di lang naman yun sa smart actually. Glow. I don't know what the problem is. Sa ano namin, kung ano yung problem namin, some of the errors also we encounter is lately, kasi I think this this month talata eh, we have lots of reports na problem yung GPS na inaccurate yung mga GPS na GPS ba? Irma. Irma. So, it's like it's a surprise. Bagyo or something, so we detect it, but but basically we're using actually a GPS, a GPS, so meaning network, the one that point out the location of the cellular sites plus the GPS. So so supposedly, it should be accurate, but sometimes it's not that accurate. And then, we we're trying to use our own navigation, which is one of the challenges of taxi drivers also. But we give we give it up and then use decided to use Waze instead. So you know, para next to our plans, na ba? So we're actually implementing Waze now for the navigation. Because for us, because we need to focus on expanding the the supply to accommodate more demand rather than fixing the navigation. Na ba? Para we're reinventing the wheel, ba? Meron naman Waze. So yun yung mga ano namin yon. Mas malo o mas mura compared sa existing. See. Like existing versus Seaways, it's actually free lang. Yung what's expensive, which actually we can talk. What's expensive is We're paying six dollars per year per taxi. Six dollars per year? Big up, no? Per year. Per year. Per year. Okay. We now have six thousand per hundred taxis. We multiply with one type of cost to expand. So, so fair, 
suffered uh, uh, the reason uh, why we created that ano, kasi we're preparing now for the new fa uh, fair, in fair structure which will be implemented in the coming weeks. No, so the moment na ma-implement na yun sa government, I think almost done. So it will be fair na sa taxi drivers. Kasi they're changing now the formula. Lugi kasi yung taga Manila kasi grabe sa traffic. Ah. Yung formula kasi ng, ng Metro Manila is kung yung speed ng vehicle is I think 5 or 10 kilometers up, iba yung formula. If yung speed ng vehicle is 5 kilometers below, iba din yung formula. Tapos lugi sila dun. Actually, kasi kung mahina yung takbo nila, they're parang spending so much gasoline compared to yung, yung maandar. maandar. Okay. Sunugi sila actually. Kahit, ano, kahit normal na, no, lugi talaga oh, yung private vehicles. Dahil sa, dahil sa traffic. So what the government did, they changed the formula to, to, to parang i-simplify it na lang base per minute per kilometer. So regardless of what's happening. The policy, the MDF. That will be implemented in August this week. So that's next week, week na. Hindi kaya pag-aaral ang taxi driver yung driving niya. Yeah. Lugi siya. Lugi, lugi siya kung mapagal. Di ba, minute? Hindi, eh, kasi ka-traffic ka. Hindi, finitix siya raw per minute. Di ba? Uh, kasi per minute, per kilometer yun. So, dapat niya bilisan din. Ah, ah para maraming. Marami, oh, para maraming kilometers. Yeah. Maraming kilometers. So, yung per minute naman, para mabawi lang yung traffic. Kasi lugi ka. Oo, kasi sa traffic, lugi talaga. So, yun. So, it's a good thing that the government is really starting to work. So, this will also work. be used by Grab and... Uh, yung ano naman, uh, yung fair structure ni Grab, it's actually the most exciting. So that's the main difference sa taxi pati compared to TNBS. Kasi sa taxis, we cannot create our own fair structure. Kasi kay NBF market talaga. TNBS, they can create their own. Yun ang i-regulate pa yung ride sharing. How's the so our strategy now is actually to increase pa the fleet. Because with, with more fleets, the dami yung reach natin. So the strategy now for the next uh, three months is to focus on deployment. And then the moment that we have 15,000 taxis na nationwide, then we can start selling our services to our advertisers. Uh, we're selling, but we're not aggressively pushing our sales advertising. Because we need to focus there. We don't want to be that damn compared to them. You, you, chura no kaba. Ini screen yore. We're screening. So that's why the strategy now is to partner with uh, select few na mga taxi operators. Ah, para sa mga infrastructure nila. Para sa mga 